it is very important to testify so other people know what God has done in your life. Amen? Without further delay, I am going to invite Jessica's team. I said we are now done worshiping. There is a special song that Nicole, Janae, and Joel are going to, uh, to sing. So put your hands together, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. I guess we have to remove this. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hand? Did you know that your baby boy was loved where angels trust? When you kiss your little baby, you kiss the face of God. Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Oh, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Oh, the blind will see, the deaf will hear. The dead will live again. Oh, the lame will leap. Oh, the tongue will speak. Oh, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy they rule the nation. Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? The sleeping child you're holding is a grave. I am. Thank you. Hallelujah. Worship Team Junior. <laughs> amen, amen. So welcome everyone. Amen. Amen. Would you adjust my mic, please? Glory to God. This was beautiful. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
There is nothing that is important for us than our children. These children led by um, Jessica and her team, they come often during the week um, to practice. During that time, other kids are doing whatever. Don't take everything for granted. Amen? So for me, this is extremely important because we are able to create something that actually will interest uh, kids. And then instead of doing uh, most of the time stupid things outside, they are here worshiping, worshiping the Lord. Amen. So thank you, Jessica, for that. Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you how we, what we preached last time. Uh, I know you remember, all of you. It was on Elijah. We will continue on the same topic uh, because it's something that is important that we understand before we move forward. Hallelujah. Amen. My device is on. I can start now. Amen. So if you can um, pop up for me uh, 1 uh, Kings chapter 18, verse 41 to 45, please. I'm going to read. And Elijah said to Ahab, go, eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose and heavy rain started falling and Ahab rode off to Jezreel. Je Je Jezreel. I almost said Jezebel. <laughs> the power of the Lord came on Elijah, and, and tucking his cloak into his belt, he ran ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. Brothers and sisters, we spoke about this. We started on 1 Kings chapter 17, talking about Elijah. Um, I believe this message is important for us to understand um, who was Elijah and how he was able to accomplish everything he accomplished. Brothers and sisters, there, there are key things here. One thing that really ministers to me is Elijah sending someone to check, go and check if there is signs of friend. And then what does he do? He goes to pray. That's, for me, it's an expectation. I'm expecting rain, and I'm asking you to go check. I haven't prayed yet. Amen? Yeah. And then I go and start praying. Amen? We live a time where people believe only what they see. Most people. If I haven't seen anything, I do not believe. Most people, especially those who are educated, they want to be able to prove something, to demonstrate something, in order for them to believe it. But what we're preaching here is faith. Something you did not see, but something you expect, and you believe it's happening. Hallelujah. The book of John, chapter 20, 20 verse 29 says, Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. For me, it means if you did not see me, maybe you wouldn't believe. 
But because you have seen me, because, Thomas, you put your hands in my wounds, now you believe it's me. Now you believe I'm resurrected. Now you believe everything I've been telling you from the beginning. But the Bible continues and said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Brothers and sisters, you are blessed. None of you have seen Jesus. None of you lived that time. But the Bible said, blessed are those who did not see but believed. So I am saying this morning, you are blessed. Yeah. Hallelujah. From what we, learned, we, we spoke last time, we, we learned two things. A larger praise, two prayers. One prayer is instantly met with all consuming answer from God. Fire came and destroyed what uh, the prophets of Baal were doing, their altar and everything. While themselves, they were trying to bring fire down and there was no fire. Remember that. But today, I will focus on the second prayer. The other prayer was not answered right away. And Elijah has to send someone to check seven times. I do not know how far was the, the top of the mountain where this person was checking. I don't know the time that was between the, 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 the seven times, but I know it took seven times for this person to see something. Brothers and sisters, do not be in rush when you're praying and you expect that something will happen to you rather boom. But the Bible says it is possible because even Elijah, who had prayed for the fire to come and consume this offering. And the fire came instantly. Even him, he had to pray and send someone seven times to go check. The person went to check six times. And on the seven times, there was something. Brothers and sisters, I am praying today. That thing you have been praying for, let me declare that this is the seventh time. Amen. I am saying this morning, go check again. But I am praying that this is the last time you're checking. Because this is the seventh time. Hallelujah. You have been probably praying hundreds of times, but you did not see anything. Hallelujah. You have been praying for all your needs. You are about to give up or you are already given up. Some of us are confused and are even upset. They wonder if really God exists, if God is listening to them, if God cares. Hallelujah. I know some of us are even discouraged and some have lost enthusiasm because you are still praying. But I'm saying this morning, we are not at the seventh time yet. Uh -huh. You have been probably praying for two, three years, but you are at the fourth time, maybe the fifth time, according to your faith. Hallelujah. The seventh time is coming. Hallelujah. This is what Elijah is teaching us today. This is the third Sunday I'm preaching on this. He has taught us how to, to pray and the attitude to have before and after, and for sure in between. Those who have been following, and those who are not here, you can go on YouTube and Google me, you will find me. Just follow uh, what we have been uh, teaching. It is important, hallelujah. Let's talk about the circumstances of Elijah's uh, prayer. If you can run the first slide. First, we learn that Ahab and Jezebel uh, reigned. They were in power at that time. Ahab was the king of Israel, 
and Jezebel was his wife, very evil, and she was able to bring the guy into the same thing. Hallelujah. The people of Israel were living in abomination of God because they followed what uh, Jezebel, the religion of Jezebel. And I spoke to you last time, I said, okay, don't think that these people were more evil than we, we are. Sometimes I think and I look around and I see that what these people were worshiping Baal, I look around and I see that we do even worse than that. I, I was expecting everyone to be quiet. I, I got a little video, someone sent me a, a, a text, a video message. It's a church somewhere. It was full of people. I think they did not have uh, space to contain the people. They went into a stadium. This church is called Beer Church. So they go there, and then trucks brings um, a, a beer. And then they drink beer. That's what they believe in. When they drink beer, they worship. They feel the, the, the Holy Spirit. And actually one guy was saying, I took one, I took the second one, on the third one. <laughs> the Bible very clear says, don't be drunk with alcohol, but with the, the Holy Spirit. Amen. They are provoking the Holy Spirit. So for them to be drunk, really, they need beer. And then the Holy Spirit will kick in. This is a church. And then it's full of people. For sure, some people came just for the beer. But others, <laughs> probably, but some others really believe this is a true church. We experience the Holy Spirit every single Sunday. Hallelujah. The Bible says again that Ahab did everything wrong to provoke God more than any other king before him. So you understand now why God was really, really mad and you understand why the prophet Elijah came to intervene and to declare a drought for three years and a half. He declared the drought and he left. Maybe they did not take him seriously but after a few months, <laughs> years, it became really, really serious. During that time, they were looking for him. They wanted to kill him. Because remember, uh, Ahab and Jezebel had killed uh, the majority of all the prophets of God that were living at that time, ex except some that Obadiah took care of them. Obadiah was the... the I can say the chief of staff of uh, Ahab. He was a person who loved and feared God. Amen. During that time that the person was nowhere to be seen, he could not work, he could not do anything, God started to feed him, remember the ravens we spoke about last time. And after the three years and a half, Elijah came to challenge uh, the prophets of Baal. That's where this fire that came from, from heaven consumed the offering of Elijah. But Baal and his prophets did everything they could. There was no fire. And in the end, Elijah prayed for the rain. Hallelujah. Today, we're going to focus on what really made Elijah's prayer so powerful? Amen. Few lessons that I learned from Elijah's prayer. The first one, your prayer has to be specific. Very specific. A prayer is a conversation between you and God. A prayer is not something that is written down and every morning you read, every noon you read. You, you, you meditate the same thing. That's fine too. But if you have a specific need, express your need to God. 
you have to have a specific, you have to pray something specifically. But you cannot pray if you don't know who you're praying to. We see on TV people who made a God and then said, this is our God. They will spend hours uh, praying, invoking, I don't know who. Uh, obviously, nothing will happen. Don't think I'm inventing something. We have, some of us have been Catholic and stuff like that. I was one of them. Hey, every Sunday I was at church. And then every time I see a statue of Mary or uh, Jesus or whatever, I say, oh, you know, I believe in those things. Because you are a child, they tell you stories, you grow up seeing the same thing, and you do exactly what everybody around you is doing. Because you don't know otherwise. Hallelujah. Am, am I the only one who... Oh, you too. Okay, two, three, four. Okay. Yo, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And when it comes to praying, as a Catholic, I remember I was a child. We, we had one day we had to go and confess our, our sins. And then there will be a guy in, the, in a booth somewhere, a priest. And then you, you go there and then you say, okay, I did this, I did that. And then, and then he will forgive your sins. The priest will forgive your sins, okay? Now, we were kids. I, I, I'm not saying I was a holy guy. <laughs> I, but I don't want to tell him my sins. He, he knows my parents. <laughs> eh? No, no. <laughs> but anyways, he will forgive my sins. Eh? So I will ask a friend of mine, what did you tell him? Sir, I don't know. I you just say I took your pencil. Oh, he took my pencil. Okay. I will, now I will tell him I, I took yours too. Okay. <laughs> what about my ball? Yeah, yeah, I will talk about the ball too. Okay, fine. So I had at least two things to tell the, the priest. So when I get there, I said, okay, you know, I, I took the pencil of my friend and, and his ball as well. Oh, do not do that, that again, okay? I forgive you, go. So my sins were gone, but I had to pray a um, couple prayers. Ten times this prayer, ten times the other prayer. I did not like that part. First of all, my sins are gone. Why do you want me to, what is this punishment? <laughs> hey, why are you punishing me? Secondly, my, some of my friends are already outside playing soccer. So I am here and I have to wait and then go through all the prayers. No. So I will start keeping an eye on the priest and then keeping an eye on my friends. And guess who will win? After just two minutes, we, I, I have not even done one prayer. I'm, I'm out already because I need to go play. My parents think I'm at church. The holy guy is, you know, this is a confession day. You know, I was out playing soccer. Uh, so there was no seriousness because you repeat things. You did not even think about it. You just do. But at that age, I was questioning a lot of things. Amen? That's how I ended up here. Amen? Amen. The second thing that I learned is God answers according to his promises, not your desires. Hallelujah. Am I ministering to someone here? God answers according to his promises, not your desires. So it becomes very important to discover God's desires, God's promises. Thank you. Hallelujah. And how do you know God's promises? You just read the Bible. That's where the word of God is. That's what he said he will do. And we know God is able to do what he said he will do. So if in my prayers I will remind him what he said he will do, definitely he will do it. Let's look at what Elijah did. Elijah prayed for the rain. The first king, chapter 18, verse 1, if you can pop that up. 
Halleluja. After a long time, in the, in the third year, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Go and present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the land. So God has already said, I am going to send rain. So that's the thing I'm going to pray for. And I'm going to remind him what he has said he will do. Yes. Amen? When he's going to do it, it's not your problem. It took Elijah seven times for, for the rain to come. Hallelujah. But because it's something God has already said he will do, and then he will do it. That's something we learn from Elijah. The third thing is recognize that God is able to meet your needs. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. God is able. Hallelujah. Thank you. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is a work within us. The power of the Lord is a work within us. The Bible says God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Hallelujah. According to the power that works in us. So you have a role to play. God knows his role and he plays his role. There is no problem over there. The problem is in us here. What power that is in you. Hallelujah. And the fourth thing is God, uh, trust God to meet your specific needs. The book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 26 says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, now faith is the assurance that what we, have, we hope for will come about and the certainty that what we cannot see exists. Once again, there is two dimensions here. You have God on one side and we have us on, on the other side. When it comes to us, we know that it is impossible. But when it comes to God, it is possible. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's move forward today. Elijah was a man like us. I told you last time. So we're still studying Elijah to understand how all these miracles were able to take place. First of all, we spoke last time and we said Elijah was a man like us. There is a reason that God directed me to preach on this message for the third time in a row. It's just because God wants everyone to become aware of the spirit that lives in you. The spirit of God in you. Hallelujah. I need a feedback. The spirit of God in you. God this morning is saying, I am the Lord all powerful. God is saying to you in the back, I am the Lord all powerful. You will succeed because I am the Lord all powerful. And because I live in you. You will succeed, but not by force, not by power, but by my spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the Lord is saying this morning, do not depend on you. Do not depend on your power. Do not depend on your strength, but depend on my spirit that lives in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I have to be honest here. Since I've been preaching this message, I see Crosspoint like an airplane that is accelerating and about to take off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But everyone knows that a plane does not just take off like this. It's not a helicopter. First, it goes from a, a position where the, the, the plane cannot do anything. This thing that can, you know, can fly from 
a certain position, the plane cannot do anything. He needs people to push it to a position where now the plane is able to do something. And the plane starts taxiing. The plane will taxi to a position where it will accelerate and take off. Spiritually, I see some of us on this, this plane that is accelerating and ready to take off. But at the same time, I see some people taxiing still while others are about to take off. Hallelujah. I see some people still dealing with immigration when others are about to take off. And I'm talking to these brothers and sisters who is still home waiting for a ride. And I'm saying, take a cab. Call Uber. We are about to take off. Brothers and sisters, I'm asking you this morning to raise up your antennas. I know I'm teaching and I'm preaching, and sometimes you have to be spiritual to, to get the meaning of what I'm saying. While others are about to take off, do not stay home if your ride hasn't arrived yet. Take a cab. Call Uber and join us because we are about to take off. Hallelujah. Raise up your spiritual antennas. Hallelujah. Amen. Raise up your spiritual antennas. It is not about your power and your muscles and your, about what you can do. It is about God. So you need to refer to God. Hallelujah. Are you here in the middle of devastating and very severe drought? Am I talking to myself? Are you in the middle of devastating drought? No, you're not, probably. Hallelujah. Let me remind you, Elijah was in the middle of severe drought. People were dying left and right. But yet, he was properly fed. Amen? Amen. Every single day, twice a day, he did not cook, he did not work. Last time I told you, he got the first service from skip the dishes, <laughs> bringing a, a triple A Alberta beef every morning, every evening. God says, do not worry, I will take care of you. So you have to refer to him, but not to your power. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Last Sunday when I was about to leave the church, I stopped to talk to this uh, beautiful lady who was going through some problems, personal problems. And then she spoke to me briefly about her divorce and stuff like that. But when she was talking to me about that, spiritually, I, I saw God removing a tree in front of her, a tree that was blocking her sight, removing that tree for her to discover the forest. Brothers and sisters, open your spiritual eyes. God is about to remove a tree that you, all your mind and everything you could see was this tree. But God took care of that tree because down the road it was not good for you. Now discover the forest. Discover the forest, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, God will remember your faithfulness. I am saying discover the forest. Let this tree go. God took care of it. Discover what God has for you, for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some will be lamenting, but I pray that God fills you with joy and peace. Hallelujah. Let other people cry, you know, lament. But you, God will fill you with joy and will fill you with peace. Hallelujah. God will respond to your prayers. Hallelujah. Amen. I need to hear you. Hallelujah. Elijah's prayer was not powerful just because this guy was coming from I don't know where. 
He was not an extraterrestrial uh, person, you know. He was not a guru. He was not an angel. He was not a superman. But the Bible says he was a man like us. Amen. Though he was a man like you. Amen. Amen. He was not extraordinary. Elijah did not have extraordinary abilities. So if you're here and you say, I am not an angel, you know, <laughs> I don't have extraordinary abilities. I'm not, I have no supernatural power, but the spirit of the Lord dwells in me. So you are like Elijah because the spirit of the Lord dwells in you. Hallelujah. The book of Romans chapter 8 verse 10 to 11 says, If Christ lives in you, then the spirit that raises Jesus, that raised Jesus from death lives in you as well. Therefore, that same spirit will give you life, will give you life to your dead body. Elijah did not pray for small things. He prayed for the, the fire to come, and then he prayed for the, for the rain. Hallelujah. Elijah did not pray for small things. He prayed for big things. Big things that everyone was able to see. Big things that changed everyone's life. He was not afraid. So this morning I'm asking you, what are you afraid of? Amen? What is the big thing in your life you are afraid to pray for? Brothers and sisters, I told you, raise up your antennas. God is saying, my spirit dwells in you. Like Elijah, you are able to, to pray for big things and they will happen. Yes, Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But that same spirit will give you life to your dead body. That very spirit that dwells in you will give you life to your dead body. Now I'm asking you, what do you have in you that you think is dead? What do you have in you that you think is sick? Or it is powerless or it is hopeless? What do you have that is not functioning well? I know your silence, but let me ask you a question. Are your finances okay? Or are your finances on life support? <laughs> Most of us, our finances are on life support. The death row. Amen. Is your business doing well? Or is your business in very bad shape? Hallelujah. Amen. Is your dream still alive? Yes. Or is your dream dead? Or about to die? Hallelujah. Amen. You know about dying. One day, for the first time in my life, I was in hospital. Uh, I don't know, I had a st stomach issue and, and stuff. And my wife called the ambulance, um, even though I had said no, but the ambulance uh, came. Um, I refused to, to take the ambulance. And then everyone was saying, you, you got to take the ambulance. I said, okay, no, I I'm okay. But I was not okay. <laughs> uh, I ended up going to the hospital. And then they fixed me pretty quick. Within hours, I was ready to go home. Uh, but what pushed me to go home so quickly was this other guy that I could not see uh, because of the, 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 the curtains. He was on the other side. But I could hear the breathing. This was not normal. Eh? It was not normal. And then the doctor came to visit people. And then I, I heard the doctor asking the guy a question. If you die again, do you want us to resurrect you? resuscitate you? The guy said, no, don't mind. If it happened, just let me go. When the doctor came to me, I said, okay, 
I'm out of here. <laughs> I am out of here. I am still alive. My dreams are still alive. They are not dead. I have many other things to do. I'm out of here. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> this is very serious. We're talking, but some of us are crying inside. Crying because of fantasies. Crying because of so many different situations. But my role is to empower you to understand that you have something within you Hallelujah. that you need to take advantage of. <laughs> this morning, I would like you to understand that and I will exercise my spiritual authority over this congregation to empower you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18 says, These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. Which means those who believe will do miracles. Amen. They will cast out demons in my name. Amen. And they will speak in new languages. They will lay hands on sick people and they will be healed. Amen. Let me ask you a question again. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you born again? Yes. Are you able to cast out demons? Do you speak in tongues? Yes. Hallelujah. Are you able to lay your, your hands on people and they will recover? Yes. I'm asking you to exercise that everywhere you go. Amen. That is the power that dwells in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray this morning that God responds to your prayers. Amen. I pray this morning that God resurrect your finances. Hallelujah. Even if they are dead. Amen. They have said they are dead. God will resurrect them. Amen. This other guy was involved in a car accident. The ambulance came, and then they did what they could. And then he heard them saying, oh, we lost him, because the machine had changed the, 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 the sound. When you are alive, the machine will beep, beep, and then beep, and then beep, according to your heart. And then at some point, the machine went beep. That means the guy was dead. And he heard them saying, we lost him. Hallelujah. And he prayed. He could not understand. They were removing everything because he was dead. But he saw them. He heard what they were saying. And he was praying. The spirit that in you, if it's not dead, you're still alive. If God has not said, your finances are dead, you're losing your house, God has the final say. So every time that situation happens to you, ask him. People are saying I'm dead, but what do you say? Eh? People are saying my finances are on life support. What do you say? Yes. Hallelujah. What is your word? What do you say to me right now? Hallelujah. And proclaim, I am not dead yet. My dreams are still alive. This husband I've been praying for is coming. Hallelujah. A time is coming where I will choose. Not you. You too tall. You too small. You too big. Time is coming. You will choose. Hallelujah. One person will choose. Hallelujah. I thank God for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Elijah was not just a man but he was a righteous man. Hallelujah. Elijah was like us when we are righteous. Amen. God hears the prayers of a righteous man. I have many Bible verses. If you want, I will give them to you. I have given so many already. I don't want to overwhelm you with Bible verses. God hears the prayers of a righteous person. God does not hear the prayers of everyone equally. Oops. <laughs> hey, when your child at home misbehaves, does all the wrong thing, despite everything you do, and the child comes and so, says, oh, oh, I want this gift. Would you buy this for me? This will be an opportunity to educate them. 
you will deny what they are looking for, and then you will come with, you know, an education time. Hallelujah. But God does the same for us too. Hallelujah. When you are a righteous man, when you live right and you pray earnestly, God responds to your prayers. Hallelujah. Are you a righteous man or are you a crooked person? I am a righteous man. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know about you. <laughs> In the book of First King, we read about Obadiah, who was the king Ahab, I'll call him chief of staff. He was a righteous man, even though Ahab was killing people around, even though Jezebel was, oh my goodness, but the closest person to them was a person who was living right. It is possible to serve a crooked person, but you remain right. You remain irreproachable. It is possible. Hallelujah. The third thing, Elijah prayed fervently. Not only he was a, 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 a person who was living right, but he prayed fervently. He prayed earnestly. Fervently means he prayed with energy and he prayed with passion. Which means when a natural person like you and me, who lives righteously and prays fervently, the result is it's going to rain. Amen. Brothers and sisters, it, does, it doesn't rain like whatever. Eh? No. You have to be a, right, a righteous person and you have to have been praying with passion, fervently. That's where we attract rain. Let's review quickly how this rain happened. Elijah, we already know he was praying. And what happened? On one side, you have his servant who was distracting him. All the time he was disturbing his prayer. Oh, master, it's not raining yet. He has just sent this guy, like, over there, go check. And then when he's praying, distraction comes. Because they are bringing bad reports. Oh, the person you're praying for is about to die. Oh, the person who is pr praying for, they are removing now stuff. Brother, I am praying here. I'm not done praying yet. Which means... I, have, I haven't heard the last word yet. Yeah. But because I haven't heard the last word yet, I am going to keep praying. Yeah. Eh? Brothers and sisters, here in this place, people were dealing with immigration. They received letters. Oh, no, it's rejected. Oh, it's rejected. Oh, actually, this day, uh, you have to be removed from the territory. Brothers and sisters, and we were praying. Why? Because we did not hear from God yet. You know, anything that is possible, do it. And you hear, they send letters saying, okay, this is a humanitarian. Can I apply to this? Even though I know I'm going to be removed from the territory, I'm applying again. Until the last moment, the last word of God came saying, no, you have all the right to stay here. Actually, stay in the country. Welcome to Canada. Brothers and sisters, don't give up too quickly. Hallelujah. Make sure this was God's word. This was the last word. Hallelujah. So on one side, we have one servant who is bringing you bad reports. Oh, there is, there is no, no rain. You're wasting your time. And on the other side, you have a king who apparently is hungry. Eh? Elijah says, go eat. This, this three years and a half eh, with drought, there is no food. I mean, people are dying. They have no food. And then you have this king who is hungry all the time. Hallelujah. Sometimes you have to take your distance. You have to send some people, even go eat, my friend, because I'm busy here, because I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. So he sends one person on one side, he sends the other person on one side, and continue to pray. For you to succeed, sometimes you have to isolate yourself. 
How many times the apostle comes and he spends the entire night in his office praying? Hallelujah. While other people are enjoying what? Opera, they are watching the World Cup. There is nothing wrong about watching the World Cup. But there is sometimes you need to isolate yourself and then pray. No one will understand you. Those who are hungry, send them to eat. Go eat. So they leave you alone and you deal with spiritual matters. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The other point is Elijah was persistent but confident. He continued to pray and he was confident about the result. Why do I know that? From the beginning, he looked at this servant and he said, go look again. <laughs> I am praying, I'm receiving a bad report, but yet I'm telling that person, go look again. Yes. Brothers and sisters, when you receive a bad report, even from a doctor, you understand? Ask him to look again. Yes. Or go check with another doctor. Yes. He will look again. Thus, it's called faith. I am confident God will not leave me. Absolutely. He will not forsake me. Go look again. Amen. The last word comes from him and him alone. Amen. Tell your doctor, look again. Amen. I dispute the result of your analysis. Look again. Amen. Hallelujah. During that time, Elijah did not stop praying. Elijah did not ask repeatedly if it was raining. Elijah did not say, is there any sign of rain? Elijah said, look again. You see the difference here? This is important when you're praying. He did not ask if there was any sign of anything. Brother, oh, you're back. Is there anything happening? Or is, ah, they said, okay, ah, let's go pray again. No. He said, go look again. In his spirit, he heard the sound of a wren. While no one was able to hear that. That's the reason he was saying this guy to go look again. Hallelujah. He believed it will rain. And he did not stop praying until it happened. Elijah was not persistent and doubting. He was persistent and confident. He was not persistent and questioning. Oh, how, how come it's now raining? I don't understand. God, you said in 1 Kings 18, verse 1, you said it was going to rain. But how come? I've been praying for hours. I'm tired. He did not question anything. He did not complain. He said, go look again. Brothers and sisters, it may look terrible. But be confident. You're looking for a job. You, you're looking for a, a husband or whatever your situation is. Be confident. Don't question the timing. Don't doubt. But be confident. Hallelujah. Amen. Two lessons I learned here. First, do not let yourself be distracted. Keep on praying. If you have to isolate yourself, if you need to stay in this sanctuary the entire night praying, let us know. We will make that to happen. We can even help you. We can even find other people that can stay with you and pray. Hallelujah. That's, it's called praying earnestly. The second lesson is do not wait for signs. Do not wait for signs. Instead, believe and trust. The book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Hey, <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't it beautiful? Whatever you ask in prayer, believe it will happen, and it will be yours. It's just a matter of you believing I have told you my story. I'm going to tell you something I never told you before. H how I prayed for myself to be healed. Uh, prior to coming to Canada, you know, we went through tribulations and stuff like that. 
they wanted to, uh, to finish, uh, to kill us, to exterminate the entire tribe. They, they were able to capture, not, not capture, they came to our house and they grabbed us and sent us to uh, prison. And then they started killing every night. They were killing so many of us. So one day, they, they, they told us um, the Red Cross, the Red Cross was coming to uh, count um, the number of people that were, that were in prison uh, because these people did not do anything. I did not do anything wrong. I just belonged to the wrong tribe. And then my wife, who does not belong to my tribe, uh, was making a lot of noise, going to, to all the embassies, uh, to Red Cross and stuff. Final <laughs> Amen. Finally, the Red Cross said, Okay, we'll come to that place, to that prison, we'll visit all the places, and then we will see how many people are there. Because once we have seen them, uh, it will be difficult for them to kill them. Because we will say, last time we counted 500 people, where are they? So I think the problem is, here is they told the gov government when they were going to come to count the people. So the day before, the day before, oh my goodness, they killed most of the people. Every day they were killing, there was hope to leave, but that day there was no hope. To make the story short, I remember I had asked my wife to, to, to send me my shirt. Um, it was a shirt with the president's uh, picture. You know those African shirts. Uh, I thought maybe that would help. <laughs> it, it did not help much. Oh, my goodness. And I cannot go into details because sometimes it, it comes back to me and I won't be able to, to talk about that. Um, to make the story short, after killing a few people, uh, dropping them in a truck that was... Um, in the middle of, of uh, this uh, military camp where we were, I heard the guy who was killing, he said, He was asking in one of the languages, bring that person who has the, the shirt with the president uh, Kabila's head on, on, uh, face on it. That was me. I told my, my friend around me, okay, bye. <laughs> I'm, I'm gone. We will see each other sometime, somewhere. Uh, when you know you're about to be killed, you, you don't even cry. You don't, it, it's happening. Because in front of you, they just killed four people. They, they, they killed four people. I won't give you details because it's not good. And then they called me. And that day, not because of the shirt I had. I'm pretty sure about that. The guy, for different reasons, said, okay, you go in that cell over there. Oh, so I went straight where they were showing me. I did not have my glasses, so I relied on, because these people, everything, they take everything from you. So I had my glasses in my pocket. And I, I don't understand. There was nobody who was in prison that I know who had, even my rings, I had my rings with me. But I left this place the same way I, I came, with all my stuff. I, I don't understand that. And no one understood that too. <laughs> so while I was in this cell, um, which was closer to, to the exit door, so from, from my cell I could see Outside, I could see the road, and I could see my wife coming. I could see, so they moved me where I could now communicate uh, with her. Uh, different ways. I won't give details, but we found a way to communicate. Amen. Now, this cell was small, very small, and then many people were there. You can stand still, but for how long? you get tired. So you sit, you get tired. Because it's full of people, 
You cannot just lay down and, you know, and relax. Impossible. On the ground, okay? There is no chair. There, there is nothing. Oh, the cement. No, no, there is no carpet. Okay? So at night, you we will sleep. You get tired. You try to lay down all the way down like this, with your, your legs. Unfortunately, another person does the same too. So you ended up having people's leg on top of yours. Because you're tired, it's fine, you sleep. But now for a long time, it becomes like someone has cut the blood circulation. It's so painful. It's like they're stabbing you. So when it becomes something you cannot bear anymore, I, I pull my legs and I put them on top. And then the person who is under there, after a few moments, does the same. <laughs> so there was no way you sleep. My back was not that good. But because of that exercise and sleeping on the ground, after one week, it was not good. And then one day, a soldier came, opened the door. Every time they were doing that, they pull you out, and then you, you don't come back. And then they open the door, and then they say, you, out. OK. I, I did not have my glass. I heard talking, but I did not know if it was me or what. Um, prisoners don't make a mistake. If they call you, they will grab you, they will throw you out. Because if you are not going out, that means someone else is going to go, right? So sick or not, they will push you out. So people uh, ask me, oh, go, it's you. They are calling you. I say, oh, okay, okay, I'm going. So I went out. Um, they did not kill me because I'm, 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 I'm here. <laughs> but they asked me to load the vehicle with ammunition and these kind of things that they were going to war. It, it was heavy, eh? heavy. So I did, and I finished. And man, I could barely walk. My back was like dead. I dragged myself into the, the cell, and then boom, done. So I sent a note to my, my wife saying, OK, I, I need medicine <laughs> because of my back. I can't even sit. And at that time, I remembered the book of Mark that says, that those who believe in Jesus will be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak in, in strange tongues. They will lay their hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. That came to my mind. And I said, OK, I'm not going to, to lay hands on other people. I will lay hands on myself. Right there in my cells, I lay hands on myself, and I prayed in the name of Jesus for myself. I rebuked this disease. I rebuked the, 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 the pain, everything, right there. And then I did not think about it. My wife found a way to struggle all the medicine in, in, in the cell a few days later. It's when I got the medicine, I opened, and then I wondered, why is she, what, what is this? And then I remembered that a few days ago, I was sick. And then I remembered that I prayed for my back. Brothers and sisters, when you have this kind of problem I had, it does not go in a day. Even if they give you whatever medicine, it takes time to heal. Mine, I prayed, and I did not even remember when I got healed. <laughs> All of this just to say the, the power of God is like a source of electricity. Mm -hmm. It's like the source of electricity where you plug in into the wall. 
If you have a need for light, you will plug into and then you will switch on when you have a powerful need. If you do not plug in, you have no power. Hallelujah. Prayer is the wire that links your need, your light, to the source. You understand? You may have your need, and then the source is there. But if there is no connection in between, your light will remain off. Hallelujah. So if your light is not connected to the source, it will not turn on when you switch on. So this morning I'm telling you, if you are in the dark, if you pray and you do not receive, let me tell you that the issue is not the provision. The issue is not the source. The source has power. You have to check everything else. You have to check the wire. Sometimes you have to check the needs as well. Maybe the bulb is out. Maybe your needs are not in perfect alignment with the will of God. Hallelujah. Are you following me? Yeah. Ah, you can pray, you pray until you turn blue. And nothing is happening. You have to check the whole things. Hmm? Is my wire broken? Okay? Am I connected to the right source? Am I praying God or am I praying Baal? Hallelujah. Some people spend the entire day praying a God that does not exist. Just because they told you this is God and then you start praying. Hallelujah. For years and years and years. Amen. We see on TV, Buddha, you know, a statue. People will pray. I spoke about my experience as a Catholic. You know, you see a statue, oh, that's God. No, nothing will happen. The God we pray is a God that is alive. Amen. Hallelujah, thank you. We do not pray a God that was made with man's hand or man's imagination. Hallelujah. My assurance when I pray comes from the word of God. Let's look in, in John chapter 14, verse 6. It says, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one, nobody comes to the Father unless by me. Through me you have life and life abundantly. Through me you have life eternally. Hallelujah. That is where my confidence is coming from. That is the reason I had to lay hand on myself, believing I will be healed. Hallelujah. And it actually happened. If your prayer is not answered, I repeat again, it's not a provision problem. Provision is still there. You are knocking at the wrong door. Hallelujah. The Bible says, if you knock, I will open. If you ask, I will give. You have to be able, I am, am I communicating with the right person? Hallelujah. The Bible says God's name is Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, which means the provider. So he does not run out of provision. Amen? Amen. 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 Maybe your problem is your needs. Check your needs. Check if they are in alignment with God's promises. You're praying something that God did not promise. It's not going to happen. The Bible says, I will give you the desires of your heart. But at the same time, if you can pop up James chapter 4, verse 4. So at the same time that God is saying, I will give you the desires of your heart. The Bible says, you are jealous and envy what others have. And you desire, your desire goes unfulfilled. So you cheat, so you become disloyal. That's James chapter 4, verse 4. You are envious and cannot obtain the object of your envy. So you fight and battle. You do not have because you do not ask God. You ask God for something, but still you do not receive it because you ask with wrong motives, out of selfishness, 
or with an unrighteous agenda, so that when you get what you want, you may spend it on your proper desires. Brothers and sisters, some of the prayers are just crazy. You praying for a better vehicle just because your neighbor has just purchased one. And then you don't understand. You say, God, I go to church. I fast. Every Sunday I give a donation. So how come you're blessing my neighbor who does not even pray? Okay, check your motive. Why are you praying? Why do you want a nicer car? Uh, car? Is that because your neighbor has just purchased one? What you're trying to satisfy is yourself, not your needs. You're satisfying your wants. Hallelujah. A small parallel to move forward quickly here uh, between Elijah and us. I have learned that success, healing, breakthrough is certain when the Lord has promised it. Brothers and sisters, your success, your breakthrough is possible. But it has to be an alignment with God's promises. Remember Abraham? He was old, almost 100 years. And God promised him to, have, to be a father of many nations. Eh? I'm, I'm, I'm about to die here. What are you talking about? It's God's word. It will happen because God has promised it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Same for Mary. You will have a child. You won't have any husband, but you're going to have a child. But I'm not even married. That's not your problem. Hallelujah. Did it happen? Yes. Because it's coming from God. Joseph, prime minister of, of uh, Egypt, he finds himself in a pit, sold, about to be killed. And that's the person who is going to be a prime minister. Hey, how come it's impossible? No, it is impossible with you, your mind, your thinking, but it's not impossible for God. Hallelujah. Amen. You may have been waiting for months and months and months, or even years, without any answer. But the Lord is not death. He, he is not. Six times the servant returned. During that time, Elijah did not curse God, did not get discouraged, did not even get upset. And most importantly, he did not change or downgrade his prayer, which we always do. His expectations remain the same. I need rain, and I need rain now. He did not give up. On the seventh time, you know what happened. Many times we get discouraged because there is a delay. We get upset. We give up. Or we change our prayer. Hallelujah. Do not change your prayer. If you're looking for six, tall, six feet tall, whatever, with blue eyes, keep your prayer. Yeah. yeah. Don't, after two, three years, you, nothing is coming. Say, okay, actually, even five feet actually is fine with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Keep your prayer. <laughs> Do not change your prayer. Do not backslide because things are not coming. Do not get distracted when you're praying. Uh -huh. Send those people to eat or to check whatever. But you keep praying. Do not downgrade your needs. Your needs are your needs. If whatever you do, it's your needs. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, let me tell you, the same God who parted the Red Sea in two is the same you praying. Is the same who lives in you. Hallelujah. Remember what he says in Psalm 37, 4. I will give you the desires of your heart. It is the same God who says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 11. If therefore you who are evil no, to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? The problem is asking, and asking the right way, living the right way. Hallelujah. The power of Elijah, to come back to Elijah, 
did not lie on, uh, on, on his merit. There is nothing he has done to have such power. Remember what we said last time. He just appeared in the Bible. Amen. Amen. His power is not, he, he, he was not an extraordinary person. But he learned one thing. He learned to rely on God. He remembered the reverence. Most of us will not stay a place to be fed every day by, by a raven. When you see the raven come, you will, you will take off. Most of us, hallelujah. He, he learned how to rely on God and rely upon God. So I'm asking you today, would you trust the Lord today? Amen. Would you wait upon the Lord today? Yes. For those who are experiencing drought in your relationship with your spouse, your colleagues at work, your own children who are obedient and rebellious, your parents, you don't talk to them anymore. Your business that is on life support, your work that, that is under fire, immigration that does not work, maybe your relationship with God. I am proclaiming today, I hear the sound of the rain. I hear the sound of the rain. You may not see anything yet, but I still hear the sound of the rain. You have been looking for a, a husband or a fiancé or a wife, and then there is nothing. You prayed all kinds of prayers. Let me tell you this morning, I hear the sound of the rain. Yes. Let me say it's about to rain. Yes, and I'm asking you, go check again. Amen. Go pray again. Do not give up. Don't get distracted. Pray again. Pray for your country, Canada. Pray for your church, Cross Point. Pray for your health. Despite all the reports you receive, keep on praying Hallelujah. Amen. I still hear the sound of the rain. Amen. Pray for your business. Love, support, or not. Pray for your business. Amen. God has not said the last word. Amen. I hear the sound of the rain. Amen. Pray for your job. Your job may be in jeopardy. Pray for your job. Amen. Pray for your marriage. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I see a little cloud. Is anyone here who sees a little cloud? Go check again. I see a small cloud like the hand of a man. I see a cloud. Oh, I declare for you, my brother, for you, my sister, your drought is over. Amen. It is over. Amen. Overflow is coming. It's coming your way. Hallelujah. Amen. Only the man of God was able to hear the sound of the rain. There was no rain to be seen. There was no sign to be heard. Sound to be heard. But the, the man of God was able to hear the sound of the rain. When he sent this person many times, the person could not hear, could not see. There was no one around who could, could see or hear anything. Nobody else. Not even the servant who is with you every day. Hallelujah. Amen. I hear the sound of the spiritual life change in you. A spiritual growth in you. I hear that. I hear the sound of success in your life. How many people are praying for success? I hear that. Hallelujah. I would like to close by saying this. Expect to see the rain. While there is no sign of any rain. Hallelujah. Stick to the promises God has given you. Stick to them. Hallelujah. Believe they will come to, to pass. And pray earnestly. Pray earnestly. Pray fervently. Pray with passion. For my sister who is desperate about your immigration status. I hear the sound of the rain. For your business, I repeat, I don't know. Someone's business is struggling. I hear the sound of the rain. Tap into that, hallelujah. When you don't see anything, feed yourself with spiritual food. To provoke the rain. Provoke the rain. Talk to God. Tell him, you said it's about to rain. I would like to see that rain in my life. Talk to God. When you have nothing, let me tell you, you have to do something. Do I have someone who is looking for something? And then you have to do something. Hallelujah. Do I have someone this morning who said, I need the rain. 
Hallelujah. Five, seven. I need a wren. My children's future is uncertain. My own future is uncertain. I, I hear the sound of the rain for your children. I have a health problem. My relatives are sick. Doctors have declared it's over. Oh, let me raise a counter declaration this morning and defeat the doctor's report. I defeat them in the name of Jesus. I defeat them. I hear the sound of the rain. Hallelujah. I declare to you this morning, go check again. Go check again. Because I hear the sound of the rain. My finances are in bad shape. I hear the sound of the rain for your finances. Go check again. I declare to you, I hear the rain. Hallelujah. You may stand up. I would like to send you home with a blessing. Amen. Close your eyes and focus on the Lord this morning. I am going to bless you from Psalm 20, 24. Hallelujah. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the Lord answer you when you are desperate. May the Lord the God of Jacob, protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. Amen. May he remember all the sacrifices and accept your burnt offering. Amen. Hallelujah. May he give you the desire of your heart today Amen. and make all your plans succeed. Amen. May the Lord protect you and grant you the desires of your heart today. Amen. May we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our Lord. May, Lo may the Lord grant you all your requests in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I praise you this morning. Hallelujah. Many of us are suffering. Many of us are about to give up. Many of us Backslid. Some are not coming to church anymore. Hallelujah. Things have been difficult. Things have been tough. Hallelujah. Help us today not to look at the facts, Lord, but to look at inside of us. Revive our faith this morning to believe in you that you are able, that you can change what is happening right now. Hallelujah. Thank you for this teaching on Elijah. You taught us how to pray and how to believe, how to call for the rain. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for this rain that I was able to see for my sister who is looking for husband. Hallelujah. Thank you because I could hear the rain when she could not see it. She could not hear it. Hallelujah. For all the financial problems. Hallelujah. We present them to you. Hallelujah. We bring them to the cross. Your blood was shed so we could live and live abundantly. We say thank you. Hallelujah. Resurrect what is dead. Hallelujah. Resurrect what is dead. Oh, hallelujah. It could be finances. It could be immigration. Letters are already out. Oh, saying people, I don't know where, Lord. We are canceling all of them in the name of Jesus. Resurrect our finances. Hallelujah. We will move forward. The word this morning said, we are going from glory to glory in 2019. I proclaim that we're going from glory to glory in 2019 in Jesus' name. If you have received this morning, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. May God bless you all. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do not be in rush to